Hey, this is Cottontail or Platypus, whatever you want to call me. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Comet Warlock build on Shining Moon RO. This build is mainly focusing on Comet without the user reading spellbook, with a little bit of Crimson Rock added in for Ghost Elements. Before I get too into talking about this build, I do want to warn anyone that's interested in this build that is not very beginner friendly. If you just started on the server or you're still quite new, I would suggest trying out a beginner build first as many of the required items are pretty expensive or just plain hard to get for a new player. Once you do get some currency going, consider rerolling to a warlock. Another thing, I play on Niflheim, you know, the superior of the two servers on Shining Moon Arrow. The server that has way more build variety, the only server that this build will work on. So if you play on Hellheim, then I'm sorry you play on a bad server, I guess? Nah, I'm kidding, they both have their own things going for them, but unfortunately, yes, this build is impossible in Helheim. You have to do some kind of reading spellbook version instead, which greatly impacts the spam ability and the overall flow of playing a comic warlock, so you should probably look for another build on Helheim. Now, what is Comet? What is this mysterious main skill that you're building for the warlock? Well. It's a neutral element AoE that does a hefty 6 cell magic attack damage with a 2 second fixed cast and a 16 second variable cast with a 1.5 second after cast and lay. It comes with a debuff that increases damage taken by carcass hit by comet by 50% for 20 seconds. You know they are affected when it turns sort of see through and pinkish. However, it comes with a hefty 20 second cooldown. So how does this work then? How do you spam this? Well, before we get too into that, let's get into pros and cons. Why you should use this skill. Pros. Big ass AoE. It's a 13 by 13 range AoE. Comet is so big you can hit things not on your screen. This makes playing this build extremely safe. And it's probably the fastest farmer in the game. If you want something dead, you can send in stuff like a Sin or a Ranger. But if you want something dead, but also everyone around it, you send in the Warlocks. The equivalent of carpet bombing in town of Porings. Pro number two. Neutral element. You don't get screwed over by holy or dark elements, which usually destroys most casters. You also don't do reduce or no damage on weak or same elements. The only thing you have a problem with is with ghost elements, and they're so rare that you can probably count them with just your fingers. And your toes. But wait! You have neutral element listed as a con as well! This is a both pro and a con! Are you stupid? It can't be both? Well, it can, and let me tell you how. Are you one of those people with a sickness? You know, that deadly sickness called the giant e -peen? The ones who cannot stop fighting monsters with a level 4 weakness, so you can blast them with all your damage and screenshot it and post it on the server discord to make everyone jealous of your big dick numbers? Well, that's never gonna happen, because there's nothing that is weak to neutral. What you see is what you get. Now, back to the pro. The debuff. This is a very powerful debuff. 50% more damage taken. It's half the effect of Vulex Eterna. But last 20 seconds is the one hit. And they can stack. This is incredibly powerful, not just for you, but for everyone else. You can easily find a spot in the groove just for your comet alone. However, it does not apply on ghost enemies, so if you cannot land your comet, you cannot apply your debuff. Now for the final con. Fixed cast time. Variable cast time is fairly easy to get rid of, but fixed cast time is a much harder task. This means you're locked into a few specific gears that you cannot get rid of. You can't wear a hat for better damage or better boots for a combo. The item needed to fully reduce 2 seconds is pretty set in stone. You're not going to get much choice here, you just have to get them. So how does this build work? As a decent long cast time or a long cooldown? Doesn't seem very good to me. But by combining a specific set of gear, you're able to reduce the cast time and the cooldown of combat to zero. That's amazing! Now before you go out committing war crimes, let's jump into gearing your little weapon of mass destruction. If there are alternatives, I will let you know. If there isn't, then it is mandatory for the build to work. The first piece of gear is the old stone magic hat from Nightmare Battle Labs. This hat is fairly easy to get, but the enchant on it is, well, a pain in the ass. I hope you have a character that can farm that place easily because you're going to be spending a lot of time there. You'll need at least level 7 for the fixed cast time reduction, 
preferably level 8 if your gear is a little behind. Each upgrade reduces your fixed cast time by 0.1. You'll also want to slot in a Plague car for the neutral damage. And this item is mandatory for the build to work. Next up is the Cardui Years. It has a lot of magic attack with your decks, but the biggest thing is the combo with the Lafine Shield. It will reduce the cooldown of combat to zero. Well, the Fiend Shield on the other hand is just a boring shield. It does give you 20 magic attack plus 7, but that's it. You can put whatever you card in the shield depending on what you need. The ears are from world bosses, so either play with loot boxes or save up enough world boss coins to get one. You can also buy it off other players. The items are not super expensive at the moment, so around 200 million should get you one. The shield on the other hand is from the exchange vendor. It requires grinding hazy forests on hell difficulty, so it's going to take a little bit of time to get 5 wandering dragon fragments. You can also buy them from other players. I say it's around 30 to 35 million on average for each fragment. The two shields are quite common. Each one is easily farmable, while the other ones run for Tessa. Luckily, both are probably worth pennies, so you should pick them up without much trouble. The white dice stuff would take a little bit of farming to craft yourself. Or you can play loot boxes, open old blue boxes, or purple boxes. Otherwise, fairly easy to get. For the lower slot, you put in a tree sprout to combine with the card do year. It adds a hefty 60 magic attack. There is an alternative if you're missing fixed cast time. A foxtail adds 10 magic attack while reducing fixed cast by 0.1. It's not much, but it's there if 0.1 is all you need from instant cast time to a cast time pleb. This is why I mentioned at least level 7 from your hat. The higher you go, the more you can sheave off elsewhere. Tree Sprout is fairly expensive and probably worse than easy 200 mil like the Cardui years. The Fox Tail, however, you can pick it off for pennies. Next up, we have the Temporal Int Manto. It's the biggest damage upgrade, so try to get this one up to 21st. It's nice 10 magic attack per 2 upgrades, 1% magic attack per 2 upgrades, and finally, 3% damage per 4 upgrades. And when you get at least 7, you get another 7% magic attack. The rest of the stats are garbage, so we don't need to read too much into it. It can also be enchanted, and you should really pick up after cast delay, as combat has a pretty hefty large 1.5 second after cast delay. As for the car, there's only one choice here. Purple Pitaya, which should increase neutral resistance by 15%, which is pretty nice, and increase your neutral damage by 3% per refine rate. At 20, this adds 60%. You can get the Temporal Mental by crafting it at an exchange NPC. And for the enchant itself, you can buy the enchanting item with Instant Point or Zenny. I highly suggest Instant Point, as you'll be burning through these just to get a good one. For armor, there's nothing else but the automatic Type B. It gives the massive 125 fly magic attack with another 10 every 2 upgrades. You can add 2 skill modifying module. Here I have 2 common modules. But you can add Shadow Spell, which increases all magic damage by the same amount. It really doesn't matter here if you're only using Comet, but it does boost Crimson Rock damage and Dream Life if you use Shadow Spell. It's not a big deal. For the last one, you can add uh, Magic Attack Percentage or After Cast Delay. It's up to personal preference here. Magic Attack Percentage should give you more bang for your buck. And as for the card, an Agav adds some Magic Attack Percentage. While wearing a Furious Night Tail will help you reach 100% crit chance if you need it. I'll go into crit stuff later, so if you can't get the armor, consider using Illusion OS for now. Now we have the Automatic Leg Type B. This will combo with the Automatic Armor Type B. If you cannot afford this, then you can use the Illusion OS Type B. It's going to add slightly less damage because of the missing combo, but the biggest part why you want this boot is the fixed cast time reduction. An automatic type B gives 0.8 seconds of fixed cast time reduction, while an illusion OS gives 0.7 seconds of fixed cast time reduction. For the cars, you'll want to research a system bot if you're using the full set. If not, then a Nightmare Varic car will work for the magic attack percentage. You can get automatic gear from doing var meal dailies and collecting 900 tickets to upgrade a piece of illusion OS to automatic. And it's going to take a while, but Illusion always can be crafted in a mere 10 minutes of farming at most. Get those first, and these are mandatory, either one of these. For accessories, you have the Magician's Glove. 
This one is mandatory as you need 100% magic defense penetration. The gloves will give you 50% and, well, nothing else as it adds damage for every element except neutral. As for the card, Roaming Spellbook adds a nice 3% int and 5% HP and SP, as well as 10% Charisma Rock and Combat Damage. It's also needed for the combo, which greatly increases your Combat and Crimson Rock damage. However, the combo does not stack. Using two of these cards will not give you double the benefit, although the non-set bonuses are good enough for you to wear two, if you so desire. You also can consider using a Dwight card, which adds 20% neutral damage. The gloves are from Fortessa, so you should probably farm floor 1 and then open loot boxes for them. If not, just buy from other players. There may be like 20-30 million at most. Now here, we are looking at the Gifinia Ice Magic Tool. Right away you can tell it has some really good stats. 10% magic attack, it has a bunch of stuff like storm gust damage, which is garbage. Why is this even here? But yes, we're getting to the good part. Combat damage increase by 50% when Jack Frost is at level 5. Also SP cost reduced by 100. That's a lot of damage. And the SP reduction is nothing to sneeze at either. At a base of 150 SP casts, it reduces by a total of 66.66%. Repeating of course. You can cast Comet for days and never run out of SP. At the very bottom, with Recognize Spell level 5, you can reduce your aftercast delay by 30%. This is another huge one, as the Comet Aftercast delay is very, very long. This item for Nightmare Biolabs Warlock MVP at a fairly low drop rate. If you can't farm these, consider buying one. I've seen them go from anywhere between 100 to 300 million. Look around, shop around, and try to find a good deal on these. I spent 200 million on mine, and they're pretty good. What we're looking at right now is the Crimson Rose Stick. It shaves off 1 second off your Crimson Rock cooldown as a fairly decent base magic attack. Combined with the hat, you can shave off 3 seconds. You might be going, well, why can't you be reading spellbook for this? What, it look like a sorcerer? I don't read, I'm illiterate. <laughs> if you want damage, you can pick up something like a welding rod or whatever else you can find, as long as one hand. Without the shield, this build does not work. As for the cards, I have a Repitaya for the combo, that's fire damage, you don't really need that, but you want the combo. If you don't have the combo, just use two Poison Plaga cards for 30% neutral damage. The Crimson Rose Sticks come from Ida Biolabs from the last boss, they're fairly common so it shouldn't cost you anything to buy off a player if you need it. There are too many other weapons to explain, so if you want to use a different weapon, it's up to your own preference. Starting off with costumes, for the top option, you want double flat HP, preferably something closer to the max of 5000. You want a high wizard stone too for your enchant, it adds meteor storm damage which is useless but trust me, you'll need it for later. For the middle slot, you have two choices here, and they're pretty similar, flat magic attack and magic attack percent. At lower gear levels, flat magic attack will outperform magic attack percentage. At higher gear levels, magic attack percent will catch up very slightly and beat it. With my gear, magic attack percent slightly out damage my flat magic attack by around 4,000 damage. It's not much when you're dropping millions, but it's there. So I would suggest getting a flat magic attack. Try to get it close to the max 50 per enchant slot. And for the stone, once again, wizard stone too. For the lower costume, you want minus 10% after cast delay. Cast, cast, cast. Not delay after attack, delay after attack is attack speed. Many people get this mixed up. They go for a maximum of negative 10% per enchant. Another potential costume is crit rate. They go for a maximum of 15 per enchant. A total of 30% crit rate total. This will easily reach 100% crit chance if you need it. So try to balance your stats with whatever you need. As for the stone, you might be sensing a pattern here. High wizard stone 2. And all comes together into warlock stone 2 which is combat damage, neutral damage, and fixed cast time reduction of 0.5. You need this. The garment itself can be any element, but I prefer holy since it slightly reduces incoming elemental magic damage and completely nullifies Adoramus and pressure that plagues Biolabs or Fortessa. Garment costumes don't draw from normal mobs and must be bought from either the cash shop 
another player or logging on for multiple months for the login reward. Next up, Warlock Shadow Weapon. Add drain life damage. That's it. That's not why we use it though. We have the Crimson Shadow Shield. Increases fire damage. Again, not why we use it. It's because with these two combined, we get 40% magic defense penetration, with additional percentage per sum of the weapon and shield refine rate. These two along with your gloves will give you 100% penetration. As for armor, I have the critical shadow armor, mainly for me to reach 100% crit rate. You can even wear reloaded or hasty shadow armor for the permanent speed boost with your shields. This is up to whatever you want to put here. For boots, you have hasty shadow shoes too, which has 2% magic then. Not much, but it gives you the benefit of having a shadow armor swap if you really need movement speed without AGA up. For accessories, it's all mighties. It has one stat per upgrade and will really help you in filling the stats needed for instant cast. Not to mention all the other benefits of the other stats on your character. And remember, you can enchant your shadow gear with magic attack, up to 3% per item, with the exception of weapon, which cannot be enchanted. With this, concludes our gearing section. Pretty long, but the annoying part is out of the way. Next up is stats. You need to get rid of variable cast time. This requires a sum of 530 int and dex, with dex giving twice the amount of int. This can achieve fairly easily with almighty shadow accessories and food. Almighty's will cost you a big sum, so be prepared to pay a lot for them. Not to mention getting it to a significant level will probably require the use of a plus 9 shadow hammer, which will again cost you a lot of money. Now for crit. Spell crit is a special modifier on Shining Moon Auro, Nephilheim specifically. It is based around your normal critical rate, and it deals 20% bonus critical damage along with a 33% scaling crit modifier, meaning for every percentage of crit damage, you only get 0.3 bonus damage. While scaling crit damage may not be beneficial, just getting a crit rate to 100 will give you a significant 20% damage boost. This damage is after all the calculations of magic attack and cards. Now, let's move on to some Q&As. Question number one. How to get big damage. Uh, big numbers. Big damage. Big dick. Nothing less. Now normally I would tell you that after cast delay will do more damage overall, but if you just want to farm with the character and you want to be able to one shot and teleport, Replace someone to the after cast a late gear with magic attack percent. Use a Dwight card if you want. Or, if you really want big damage, there's a reading spellbook version for even bigger hits. You can replace your Lafine shield, since you don't need it anymore, with a gravitational staff, and wear a Jade Helm for all the common damage in the world. I'm rich, what do I buy? So you're loaded as hell and your money shooting out your ass. What should you get first? First choice is obvious MVP cards. Fender Car is 150 magic attack. Heimo Phantom is 100% neutral damage on Garment. KLD for 30% after cast delay reduction. If you're looking for upgrading advice, then it goes for weapon first, then garments, then your shoes if you have the set, the helmet, and then armor. And don't forget your hat enchant, it has a significant amount once you get it to level 10. What stats? I'm not going to give you specific stats because what you need depends on your gear. Do you have almighties? What stats do your garment give? Your hat? Your other pieces of gear? Generally, you want to add at least 120 dex and int just for your card to be year combo. This will also push you towards instant cast. A reasonable amount of luck adds both damage and crit rate. And you want some attack speed to increase your cast animation. So you need a decent bit of agi. You can eat an infinite berserk potion to boost that up even more. And finally, vitality. A reasonable amount of it to be immune to status and a healthy HP pool so you don't get one shot. And this is the end of my guide. Wow, that's pretty long. Hopefully you enjoyed my warlock and maybe if you like it enough, you can become your warlock too. I don't mean like give you my warlock, no, make your own, your own shit. Thanks for watching.